Countdown to blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. unknown come tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents X minus Tonight, an original story by Ernest Canoy. The time, early in the 21st century. The story, Martian Sam. The whole thing started the first day of spring training. I'd gotten into camp two or three days before and started to loosen up a little. Because at my age, even batting fungos to an outfielder can tie your muscles up into knots. Although, as a matter of fact, I'd bet that I was in better condition than half the Humpty Dumpties on the club. We hadn't won a pennant since, uh, let's see, 1997 or was it 98? And it looked like we had a permanent lease on 12th place. The Los Angeles Dodgers were in pretty sad shape, and that's the honest truth. I was standing behind the batting cage watching a couple of kids from our Tokyo farm team when Tommy Watson... And the New York Times Tribune News caught me by the elbow. Hi, Joe. Well, how does it look this spring? Well, Tommy, the club has been considerably improved. Mm-hmm. Several of the youngsters are ready to deliver this year, and, uh, of course, we expect sterling performances from our veterans. Is that what you want? Oh, come on now, Joe. Come off it. Has old man Castle loosened up enough to buy a catcher? Not that I know of. Well, how about a left-handed pitcher? Well, they're those two boys from Tokyo. Oh, come on. They couldn't throw a cream puff across the dining room table. Well, how does it feel to be first base coach for a team that'll clinch last place by July 4th? You're very kind, Tommy. Very kind. I just hate to see that old Tidewad castle run this club into the ground. I remember my father used to tell me about the times way back, when they were still in Brooklyn. <laughs> and I can remember going down to Robinson Stadium when I was a kid to watch doubleheaders with the Denver Giants. Now look at them. A bunch of overage bums and a few kids who could hardly make the high school team. And all Castle's money goes to buy sports rockets for that screwball son of his. Oh, Joe, baseball isn't what it used to be. The sad truth of the matter was that Tommy was putting it mild. Old man Castle, the owner, begrudged every nickel that was spent on the ball club. I don't think anybody would gotten a raise in the last five years. The manager was old Rabbit Sinadella, and Castle used to issue statements every year about how he had great faith in him. The truth of the matter was that Rabbit would work for less than any other manager this side of the Sally League. You'll see what I mean when I tell you that the club traveled in an old four-jet strato rocket like some barnstorming semi-pro team. I was in the locker room looking down at my feet to avoid looking around at what passed for ball players on this Los Angeles Dodgers when Rabbit came up to me. Joe. Yeah. Get your pants on and clean to the office. Oh, what's the matter? Never mind. Come on. Okay. Listen, Rabbit. What are we going to do about a left handed pitch? Later, later. Joe, I had an idea. I thought we could take one of the right handers and start a backwards across his shirt, and maybe that'd fool the other club. Yeah. Come on, it's right. We had a disguise Iron Mike, the batting practice robot. All right, that's enough. Joe, the old man's dead. What? I said he's dead. Old man Castle. Heart attack. I figured we had him scared so he'd loosen up a little dough for players, and then he goes and does this to us. Can't trust nobody. Well, who gets the club? His son. What, you mean Whistling Willie Castle, a jet stream playboy? That's who. But he doesn't know anything about a ball club. He doesn't have to. Old man Castle owns 72% of the stock. 
And it all goes to Willie. Well, what's going to happen? Beats me. Probably sell us all out and buy a new rocket. Is he here? It was on the Earth Moon small boat race when it happened. Mm. They got a message to him when he hit the direct beam off Lunaport. He could have landed and taken the shuttle back and made it in one day. But he was leading in the race, so he just kept going. He's due in a couple hours. You think you can get him to go for a left-handed pitcher? I don't know. We'll have to try. Of course, you've heard of Willie Castle. About once a year, he cracks up some expensive sports rocket or gets himself picked up in a survival suit by the IP floating somewhere in an orbit around the moon. He almost got put away a couple of years ago when he took a debutante up on a Harrison Kilgore cruiser and kept her in orbit for two months. The old man was able to kill the abduction charges by claiming that they'd been married at the time. And one time when the old man had a couple of us up at the lodge he lives in during spring training, I saw the kid's room. It was filled with marak heads that he'd shot on safaris on Mars. He came down to the training camp a week later. He buzzed over in a Harley Donaldson atmospheric and set the ship down in the hole between second and third, burning out half the infield. I saw a rabbit get him to one side and start talking fast, so uh, I sneaked over and listened. Well, Mr. Cassidy, of course you know we're all very sorry about your father's death. And he you... had it coming, the old tightwad. Oh, well, uh, I see. I couldn't convince him that a credit isn't any good to you stuffed in a mattress. You got to spend, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, it is. As a matter of fact, that's what I wanted to see you about. Now, there's a boy in one of the Milwaukee farm clubs, a left-handed pitcher. I can get him for about 30000 and a couple of players. What do we... you mean? Well, I mean, you're absolutely right, Mr. Castle. You've got to spend money. And if we could get a little help in pitching and maybe an outfielder or two... You mean spend money for baseball players? Well, yeah. That was what I had in mind. Now, wait a minute. This baseball team was my father's hobby, like some old men collect stamps or play checkers. Now, in the terms of the will, I can't sell it. But I'm sure not going to throw any good money away on something foolish like baseball players. Oh, oh I see. As a matter of fact, I'm going to need all the cash I can lay my hands on. Yeah? Yeah. I've got a chance to buy a three-pile nuclear eraser that'll cut two weeks off the round trip to Mars. Oh, I see. You wouldn't want to spend money on anything as foolish as ball players. That's it. You've got the idea now. Oh, by the way, Mr. Cinevilla. Yeah? I find it's quite embarrassing to me to have my friends continually make fun of me because the Dodgers are in last place. Well, as a matter of fact, that gets to be a touchy point with me, too. Well, I'd like to see a change. So if you don't mind, would you please have them somewhere in a more respectable position, say third or second, within a month or two? Now, look here, Mr. Castle. I can't make bricks without straw. You won't spend the credit for a ball player, and I can't... You do your best. Well, after that interview with the new owner, Rabbit went out and tied one on. And I had to run the ball club for two days till we got him straightened out. But I can't say as I blamed him. We won one game in the Grapefruit League. We played the Jacksonville High School team and squeaked out a 13-12 to victory. Or what the Yankees and Braves did to us, I'd rather not say. We opened a season at home, and a mediocre pitcher for Pittsburgh threw a no-hitter at us. Actually, that's not quite accurate. The truth is, he just pitched, and we didn't hit anything. We lost 10 straight from opening day, and we didn't lose on the 11th day because it rained. Rabbit and me piled into his 97 copter and flew out to the Castle Estate up near Arrowhead. I was in pretty bad shape. For one thing, Rabbit's copter has a wobble, and I was feeling green around the gills by the time we dropped down on the port. Willie Castle was very excited by the time we finally got to see him. He was puttering around a whole mess of stuff piled up in the middle of the floor. Say, how do you like this? Is it exciting? Yeah. What is it? It's a Durgo stick. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And they use it in Mars in a game played between two villages. You see all the men on one side line up, and then all the men on the other side try to knock them over with these sticks. <laughs> is it a beauty? Yeah. Uh, look, Mr. Castle, I got to speak to you. We got to have a left-handed pitcher. Oh, you mean for the baseball team? Yeah, that's right, the baseball team. That's what we got to have a left-handed pitcher for. Yeah. Well, now, I can't really be bothered with details of that sort. I'm leaving for Mars in the morning. 
Oh, by the way, I haven't had a chance to look at the standings recently. How are we doing? Mr. Castle, we may well set them out on record for consecutive games lost. Now, look here. You told me you can't sell the club. And you said you get tired of your friends kidding you about being last. Well, take it from me, Mr. Castle, and I know. Unless we get some ball players on that club, it's going to be last for the next 22 years. Now, look here, Cinderella. I, can... I know you can fire me, but I don't care who you hire as manager. Unless you get him a left-handed pitcher and a couple of other players, that club is going to stay last. Oh. Oh, well, then I'll, I'll see what I can do. Don't worry about it. What do you mean, don't worry about it? I gotta go out there every day and try to make those buns go through the motion. Now, look, I really have to pack. And besides, I'm expecting a new shipment of equipment from Aberfitch and Comby. Now, just don't worry about it. I'll think of something. Goodbye. the doubleheader to Cincinnati by a score faintly reminiscent of basketball. And that's the way it went. Oh, we won a couple here and there. Like they say, you know, you can't lose them all. About the middle of the season, we were so far behind that the local papers just dropped us off the standings, didn't even bother to report it. It was about this time that Willie Castle returned from Mars. He came out to see us at the ballpark just before the massacre. Well, I noticed, Mr. Cinadilla, that we're still in last place. Yeah, Mr. Castle, we are. We are lucky we are still in the league. With the ball players that you've given me. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I made a small bet with one of the boys at the country club. Yes? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I bet a million credits that we'd win the pennant this year. That's nice. You don't seem to understand. I expect to win that bet. Yeah, sure. And I expect to put on a Monroe suit and win the Miss Universe title. I told you to leave everything to me. Now, I'd like you to come into my office, if you please. I have a few things I'd like to talk over with you. For one thing, I've signed a ball player. You, you what? Oh, look here, Mr. Castle. This I got to complain about. My contract is clear. No ball player gets signed without my okay. Uh, just come into my office, please. I'll explain everything. That night, when Rabbit went up to the plate to hand in the starting lineups, I could tell something was happening. For one thing, old Baldy Snuff, the umpire, was looking at the card like it was written in Arabic. All right, who's the pitcher? It's written right there in the card. Caramo Castro Perbac. What's the matter, can't you read? Oh, come on now, are you kidding? Is he Armenian? Nope. Martian. Martian? That's right. Martian. Of course, the riot didn't really start until our pitcher got out on the mound. Fred Kurtz, the Milwaukee manager, came running out like he'd been shot from a jet. Baldy Snuff was hollering. The whole Milwaukee bench was looking for a fight, but Rabbit just stood there quiet and calm. He can't do that. He can't do that. Look at that thing. What is that? That's my pitcher. We call him Sam. But you can't play with that. That ain't a ball player. That isn't even a human being. What are you trying to pull, Rabbit? Listen, I got my rights. I signed them legal. Here's the contract. But, but now look here, but, Rabbit. You can't get away with that. That thing's only about two feet high. Eighteen inches, as a matter of fact. But how's he gonna pitch? He hasn't even got any arm. Sure he has. He's got it curled up. Hey, Sam! Wind up! It's that arm. It's, 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 it's 32 feet long. That ain't legal. You gonna let him get away with that? Oh, there's one other thing. On the end of that arm, look, you see? That's his eye. Rabbit, I'm going to punch you right in the nose. Now, take it easy, Kurtz. Take it easy. Look, i got the papers all here. I've got the United Nations concorda with the Marshall Colonial Government, a Supreme Court decision in the case of Schultz versus Carroll, Calpable, Calpitz, et al. That's legal. Any Martian citizen is entitled to the same legal rights and privileges as a citizen of Earth. And among those is the right to play ball in a national league. I protest again. I forfeit the game. I, I, I... Rabbit, I'm going to punch you right in the nose. It 
a matter of fact, the game that night was postponed because of riots. The next morning, everybody met in the commissioner's office, and sure enough, it was legal. Marsh and Sam, we come to call him, was the legally signed player for the Los Angeles Dodgers. I told you not to worry. I found Sam in a village just north of Marsport. He's a Klugel hunter. A what? A Klugel hunter. Klugels are fast little animals that run about 80 miles an hour, and the hunters go out and throw rocks at them and kill them. Sam's a Klugel hunter. He ought to be a pretty good pitcher. How about the other clubs? What happens if they get Klugel hunters? Oh, they won't. You see, it's basically contrary to Martian psychology. They won't ever leave their own villages. Then how come Sam left? Well, it was an unfortunate accident, really. You see, when I first met him, I, uh, I gave him a stick of chewing gum. Yeah? Well, he got hooked. What do you mean, hooked? Well, for Martians, the chickle seems to be habit forming. Sam is a gum addict. Well, naturally, as soon as this was discovered, the traffic was prohibited. There's a death penalty for importing of chewing gum to Mars. But it was too late for Sam, so he came out with me. You mean all we got to do is keep him supplied with chewing gum? That's right. I told you I'd take care of it, didn't I? Now you've got your left-handed pitcher. Sam pitched that night. He struck out 27 batters, and we won three to nothing. Horse Kelly, the catcher, had a little trouble at first, but he soon figured out how to get around it. He'd just hold his mitt up and close his eyes, and when he heard a thunk, he'd reach in and pull the ball out and throw it back to Sam. You can imagine what it was like being a batter up there against Sam. Pitcher's mound is only 60 feet away from the plate as it is, and with Sam's 32-foot arm, well, we didn't lose the game the rest of the season. Of course, we started out so far behind that by the last game of the season, we were tied with the Milwaukee's and we were playing them at Milwaukee. The winner of this game won the pennant. Of course, it was a lead pipe cinch for us. Marsh and Sam had pitched every day since he joined the club. He looked real cute out on the mound, standing 18 inches high in his little Dodgers uniform and in that long 32-foot arm. We had taken a finished batting practice at Milwaukee County Stadium, and I was standing next to Willie Castle's box talking to him. Well, it looks like I won't have to be embarrassed about owning the Los Angeles Dodgers anymore, eh? That's right. With Sam pitching, that means we win the pennant and the series. Well, I think that's very nice. As a matter of fact, uh... I'm thinking of taking the whole team on a barnstorming tour through Mars after the series is over. Hey, Joe! Joe! Oh, Mr. Castle. What's the matter? It's Sam. Sam! What's the matter? Is anything wrong with him? Did he get his chewing gum? Yeah, yeah, he got his chewing gum, but he's just lying on the floor in the locker room moaning. He is? We better get a doctor. Yeah, and all those scales keep falling off him. Oh, no, no. What's the matter? I know what it is. What? It's the molding season. All the scales will fall off. It'll take him a week to grow new scales. But he can pitch, can't he? No, no, he can't. Any violent movement would bring on great pain. Well, there goes the ball game. Marsh and Sam can't pitch. We're dead. Rabbit put it mild. We were good and dead. We pitched Harry Kuznowski, our best human pitcher, but our best human pitcher was none too good. He rose to the occasion, however, and the score was tied going into the last half of the ninth. That's the way, Harry, old boy! That's the way, Harry! Come on, Harry! Look at those, baby! Unfortunately, he couldn't. He hit a streak of wildness and walked three straight men. Things were very quiet in the Dodgers' dugout. One more walk would force him to run the ball game with the over. Then as we all sat there staring out at the mound where Harry was sweating, we heard a little shuffling noise. Oh, what's that? Sam! Sam, what are you doing out here? And then with the little squeaks that he used for talking, Sam told us what he wanted to do. <laughs> he wanted a pitch. But, Sam, you can't. You're molten. Your scales. <laughs> all right, Sam, all right. If that's the way you want it, you get out there. You pitch it at one batter. It's two out. You strike him out, it'll go to extra innings, and we'll win the ball game. <laughs> Marsh and Sam trudged out to the pitcher's mound, his tiny legs lagging with great pain. You could just tell the little guy was hurting bad. Now pitching for Los Angeles. 
Angeles, Martian Sam. We knew the train could do it now. We only had to face one batter and we'd get our chance again. Horse threw the ball out to him and Sam stood there, his eye on the end of his 32-foot arm blinking with pain. All right, batter up. Let's get a batter in there. The umpire called for the batter and nobody came out of the Milwaukee dugout. Hey, come on, let's go. Hey, Kurtz, get a man up in there. What's the matter, Baldy? Let's get a batter in there. You're delaying the game. What do you mean I'm delaying the game? You get a batter up there. But I got a batter up there. What do you mean? There's nobody in the batter's box. Baldy, I got a contract here for you to read. What are you talking about? Here. Read it. Well, of course, everybody knows what happened. The Milwaukee Braves had signed an intelligent virus from the moons of Jupiter. He was up there in the batter's box, but of course you couldn't see him without an electron microscope. He walked on four straight pitches, forcing in a run, and the Milwaukee's won the pennant. But like I say, that's baseball. You can't win them all. You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features Time in the Round by Fritz Leiber, the story of a dictator who suffered more than any dictator in history. He was so puny, and his victims were so impregnable. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight, X-1 has brought you Martian Sam, an original story written for radio by Ernest Canoy.